All right, here we are, another episode of Let There Be Talk. Fantastic guest today. We have a director of a uh, amazing documentary I saw recently called Mr. Jimmy, and my guest is Peter Dowd. How are you, buddy? You're the director mm. of it, the uh, masterpiece. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for saying masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, happy to be here, Dean. Thanks so much for having me. What a film, man. <laughs> it's uh, it's you know I've been to Japan. A few times i absolutely love japan and the thing i love about japan the most is their passion and their i mean their deep dive rabbit hole of something they might love mm. so mm. there's a neighborhood there off of shinjuku there uh you know they have all the bootleg shops and mm -hmm. then down mm -hmm. the road from there is a street that basically, if you want to look like a 60s hippie, like out of Easy Rider <laughs> or, uh, say, Haight-Ashbury, there's a store there. Yeah. And it will have everything perfect recreated. Yeah. Say you want to look like um, uh, a 70s biker. They have a store with all that clothing. Uh, you want to look like... Um, you know, a cowboy from like, uh, you know, a, a James Dean film giant. They have a store for that. and But it's not just, uh, you know, oh, cowboy stuff. It'll be like, this is exactly what James Dean wore in Giant. This hat, we sourced it out. Yeah. We got the original. These uh, This denim is, uh, you know, hand woven from the original... Uh, you know, the, 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 the machines from Levi, you know, the, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I have that kind of, um, rabbit hole thing of like passion of like, if I love something, I absolutely go crazy and all in on it mm. to say, uh, you know, deep dive rabbit hole. Mr. Jimmy is probably the king of it. Let's <laughs> let's get into what we have here. It was kind of a long intro, but it. I'm trying to it. set yeah. up yeah. my love of Japan and why. Because I wear Japanese denim. These glasses uh, are made in Japan. Uh, okay. uh, everything I, you know, I love Japanese made stuff because mm. it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, being there... Uh... Yeah, I went four times uh, over the course of making the documentary, and I think maybe five days into being there the first time, all of a sudden it just kind of all crystallized. I was like, oh, everything makes sense. Of course he's like this. Of course he's soldering in particular. He wants to test a shielded power cable versus an unshielded power cable to detect how that might affect the tone. Of course he's going to measure how much solder do we want to use on this capacitor. Because when you go, walk into a 7-Eleven in Tokyo, it's like coming to Tiffany's on Fifth Avenue. I mean, the the attention to detail, the craft, the organization, it's in, it's throughout the culture. It permeates the culture on every level, even in the most mundane things. There's such respect for no matter what your job is, no matter what your task is, things are done properly. And um, I loved it. I mean, yeah, being exposed to Judah is my first time ever in Japan. Um, but yeah, everything just sort of clicked. You're like, oh, th this is why Akio does it this way. He has no other choice. If he's going to do it, he has to do it all the way. So what we're talking about here is basically um, Akio. That's his, I, I call him Mr. Jimmy because that's what he yeah, goes Mr. Jimmy. by. Yeah, Mr. Jimmy. He's a, he's a young man. His buddy turns him on to Zeppelin. And from that day, like a lot of us, uh, we want to play guitar. We want to be in a band. Uh, he falls in love with Zeppelin. But he goes even further. He wants to basically become Jimmy Page. And over this period of uh, years, he s slowly sources out exact Marshall amplifiers, exact guitar tones, chords, pickups, soldering, exact and this is the one that blows my mind because i've been wanting to know who made the jimmy page dragon pants he sources out a woman who hand embroiders all the outfits that jimmy wore in his career all of them the opium 
uh, mm. outfit, the the dragon pants and jacket, even the early 69 look of the Whiskey A Go Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every outfit. And not only does he find somebody to make them, which was blowing my mind, he would slow down. The song remains the same and be like, oh, wait a minute. There's a crease right there. <laughs> And I'm I'm getting the crease because the arm is not right. The arm holes too small or too big. It it is almost insane, but at the same time, I can relate to it. Because yeah. I'm going like I, I understand. I mean, he's becoming somebody else. I don't relate to that, but I do yeah. relate to fine craftsmanship in everything. I want mm. the best. I want the Jimmy Page exact outfits. I want the exact tone, the exact amplifiers. Mm, 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 mm. At what point do you meet this man and decide to do a documentary on him? So uh, it all started with uh, one late night text from a friend. I grew up in Boston. He's still in Boston. And he sent me a text saying, hey, Peter, I just saw a Zeppelin tribute band because I'm a huge Zeppelin fan. Just saw a Zeppelin tribute band that wasn't total shit. It wasn't even Jimmy. But it got my mind going about tribute bands. What is this thing? What is this all about? I was uh, I just finished one film, needed to start another. And I was like, you know, this is interesting, right? Like anybody can, or not anybody, but you could maybe decide that you want to try to paint like Van Gogh. But it's something different to try to paint like Van Gogh, dress like Van Gogh, cut off your fucking ear, live your entire life like Van Gogh, die young. I mean, every detail. And I thought, these guys are, this is kind of an interesting life. You're an art, you know, uh, I do feel like the American way a lot of times is be yourself, right? But what's it like to, to not be yourself? Uh, but then I, I went down, speaking of rabbit holes, the rabbit hole of YouTube, I looked at every tribute band out there. and Who, who yeah. were you looking at? Zeppelin only I or mean, other bands? Anything. Uh, Van Halen, Judas Priest. I mean, every yeah. band out there has a copy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, no, no, no problem with them, but there just weren't any that were actually inspiring. I just thought, okay, I, I don't want it. Man, you, to make a documentary, you're putting a couple of years of your life into it. Yeah. You're not doing it for the money. And I, I just, it's not good karma or it's just not my vibe. To, I'm not going to make a movie taking the piss out of somebody or having a laugh or anything like that. And I thought maybe, ah, maybe this isn't the best idea because I kind of wanted to go a little deeper with it. And then I saw this clip and it said Rain Song, 1979 version. Press play and boom, it was just instant. I recognize because I'm a fan, blue button down shirt, white linen pants black loafers yeah nebworth nebworth to a fucking t and i'm thinking you know yeah every all these other you know maybe everyone yeah good they get some vague amalgamation of a dragon suit right who the fuck does nebworth yeah we i love jimmy page the man's a god maybe his least cool look but Are also you... <laughs> interesting look because he's like 71 pounds at that time, full <laughs> strung out. And and transitioning into punk, new wave, whatever you want to call it. Right. It's like Zeppelin, the, the Zeppelin that, that wasn't, you know, is the start of. But anyway, I'm like, who would track down this obscure look to a T? I'm like, this is wild. And then more importantly, I press play. I'm listening to the way he's playing. He's playing it the 79 style, 79 tone, 79 arrangement. And then there's a clip from 1970. Page had a beard in 1970. Akio has a fake beard. Wow. And he's he's holding his body a little more introverted because Page in the early days is a little more introverted. Then, of course, 75, 77, he's got the white dragon suit. He's, you know, acting as if he's in uh, the Silver Dome. You know, he's big moves big moves yeah. wi wildly the arm got, throw. you know yeah he's got the <laughs> shades you know and you're like this guy and and again it all comes back to the plane the plane you could have the costumes but if the everything has to be perfect the plane as you know was so bang on i'm like this guy is like a virtuoso himself virtuoso player fucking musical historian and a method actor yeah full on like he's He's got it all. And I, I just, without thinking, I think my best decisions in life are turning my brain off just emotionally. I just found his website. It was all in Japanese. Didn't know <laughs> what it was all about. But I just sent a very simple email saying, I really don't know what your story is, but I think it might be really cool. And I think I might just be the guy to, to tell it because I'm, I recognize all these details. I recognize Nebworth, 77, 1970. I recognize all this stuff. And... um Maybe I could help tell your story. And uh, his wife, 
Mrs. Jimmy, uh, yeah. wrote back and said, you must be a lucky guy because he just moved to L.A. to join Led Zeb again. So at that point, I'm like, well, now I have no choice. This is like, this is fate. Right. And that was it. That was the start of it. it it's really, when you think about what has to happen for him to become Mr. Jimmy, it's almost mind boggling because any of the things and it's out, he looks like him. Yeah. It, it's really bizarre. Yeah. You know, he's like, yeah, he's Japanese, but he looks like Jimmy. Hmm. Jimmy, oftentimes you're like, is Jimmy Japanese? Does he have some Hawaiian in him? Is it, you know what I'm saying? He's got this Maybe. Uh, different looks throughout his years where you're quite, you know, uh, kind of ambiguous his, uh, his look. Um, and then he has to learn to play guitar yeah. and not only learn to play guitar, but at the highest level. And then he has to, you know, find other people to do it with him. Yeah. Which is all, which is the main torture of the, um, of the documentary, of course, you know, <laughs> his, um, uh, his passion and his insanity to a point it is, a. Uh, like and set, after a while, you're like, oh, I played with guys like this, you know, and <laughs> and after a while, you're like, you, you know, like, no, I said, move left, then right, then up, you yeah, know, when yeah, you're doing yeah, a rock yeah. move or whatever. <laughs> but all of that has to come together for him to become this and then never stopping, uh, yeah. never stopping. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is so wild. I have a lot of questions. Um one of the best things I'm going to tell you guys about this podcast is if you're a huge Zeppelin freak like us, I absolutely worship Zeppelin. And there was a time where I owned every Zeppelin bootleg. Every show has been bootlegged, every one of them. Mm -hmm. And I had them all on CD. I went to Japan. Uh, I went to this place, Fish Heads, I believe it was. Uh, and they had everything. And Japan has the best bootlegs. There's even a scene where he goes in and gets some. They're yeah, the yeah. over-the-top ones, you know. Tarantura, uh, Tarant, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. whatever Tarantura, the, yeah. that, yeah, and then and different uh, brands that would just outdo each other with these bootlegs. But it's amazing. One of the great things in the documentary is where you just said it. Seventy two, Jimmy plays "Song Remains the Same" like this, mm. but in seventy three. He plays it like this. Yeah. In 75, Broken Finger Era, he plays it like this. Yeah. 77, like this. So there's a part in the movie where it's so great where uh, he's showing you all yeah. of the different nuances of that. And yeah. most people go, I don't even, I don't, I don't see it. Yeah. I hear it, yeah. but the way for him when he shows it to you is so amazing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's uh, he does stairway like yeah. a, like a BBC Sessions version, right? Like a seventy three maybe MSG version, and then he does like a Nebworth arrangement. And it's funny, yeah. Your casual person might be like, "Oh, this guy's nuts." I didn't hear anything, but if you're a musician at all, or if you have an ear, you're like, "Oh, it really did evolve." Those are three different arrangements three different styles yeah and uh that is anyway that's why the whole endeavor is worth doing that's because jimmy page and the band they were a real live band almost like a jazz band where they were imp they were really doing it for themselves to keep it interesting and to they weren't just rehashing the same version again and again and again and constantly pushing it forward and so it is really interesting to see Man, in 75, they were getting really funky. That's yeah. a really funky tour. Yeah. That stuff is really fun and interesting versus, say, a 73 is a whole different vibe, certainly versus 69. And Paige was changing amplification, changing, you know, all kinds of stuff. And um, yeah, to, and to, to, I, again, I, yeah, I had tons of bootlegs myself, but to sit, with him in a high watt amp and recreate a 1970s style show and really dig into that tone be like, Oh, that's really badass yeah. tone. It's, and it's different than, than the Marshall thing. And I got a education times a hundred on Led Zeppelin. Think I went into it thinking, yeah, I know all the stuff, man. I got all the tapes. I got stuff. And I was like, wow, this guy is on a different, different level. Uh, Akio's study is that deep and it's worth doing because yeah, Jimmy Page was just constantly evolving, keeping it interesting, pushing the envelope. And I think there's really no other band like that. 
So he moves to LA. We're going to get, uh, I don't want to fast forward too mm-hmm. quick on that, but your first meeting with him, he doesn't really speak English. Yeah. He moves out here to join a cover band, a tribute band, which is mind boggling crazy. <laughs> and we'll get into why he does that in a minute. But when you first sit down and meet with him, does he move out here with a translator? Because I didn't, uh, I was trying to figure that out oh, in the oh. film. No, he, he speak. uh, from now, you know, uh, he's been touring enough with guys. His English has gotten significantly better. Back then, I mean, I used to sit there and go like, how the fuck are you working out a lot, a 26-minute arrangement of Days and Confuse? You don't even speak English, and these other guys don't speak Japanese. Like, how the fuck? And so a lot bizarre. of times, it, it was exceedingly difficult. Yeah, he didn't come out here with a translator. He spoke, at that point, really limited English. But... um. I don't know, the universal pointing, grunting, nodding, uh, oh. somehow, yeah, <laughs> somehow they got through it. But yeah, our first uh, interview was all, you know, with the translator and uh, I, you know, to be honest, at the first meeting, I filmed a concert with uh, him and Zepp again and I, I did a sit down interview and I still was like, gee, I don't know, maybe this will be a short film. I don't know how, how, how deep can we go with this? Could this be as long as a feature? And he, he came in and he played the rain song. And I, it was like fucking being inside the record. It was like terrifying and awesome and amazing. And he like puts the guitar down. And I was like, wow, like, you know, that song's in an unusual tuning. And a lot of people like can't figure out how to play it. How, how long did it take you to figure that one out? And he's like, 35 years. <laughs> and I like, I like laughed. And he's like, what are you laughing for? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, well, Peter, I listened to that record still 35 years on and maybe i just one fret position one finger position a year or maybe pick up one note every other year and i was like oh this this is gonna be a feature <laughs> feature like yeah. movie because he is in deep and uh, yeah but the communication thing at first i mean the whole thing it was uh he was going for it but i mean he had literally just met jimmy page face to face yeah and that that you can't underestimate how what that was for him yeah and that if jimmy page didn't go to tokyo to to promote celebration day and decided man i literally the guy he had just got off the plane maybe i don't have the energy to see a three and a half hour tribute show if jimmy page said uh i think i'll have to do it next time maybe there wasn't a next time maybe akio just stays in tokyo keeps his day job and never takes this this journey yeah never know but so here's what happens people he starts to be a, uh, become Jimmy and get obsessed. And on the weekends, he puts together kind of a four-piece band that plays in a, a small bar that holds maybe 50 people. And he starts playing there for years. Yeah. And they're doing like eras. Like, oh, you can go see 72. A lot like all oh, of these dead uh, cover bands that'll yeah. be like Dark Star Orchestra, where they're like, we're going to do uh, the Great American Music Hall uh, record release show, or we're going to do seventy six, uh, you know, uh, New Jersey, whatever. So he starts doing that, and for years and years and years, and then one day, Jimmy Page comes into this bar and watches this four piece band and watches him recreate Jimmy in front of his face and. The camera angle's amazing because it's behind Jimmy and you just see him just going, oh my God, like the whole night he's going crazy. Like he's nailing this and and it is insane. And then the, the next day or so, he decides to move to LA. But did you ask him how Jimmy found out about him and who brought him there and that whole thing? Yeah, so, you know, Jimmy Page is pretty keen on all things everything that's going on in the Zeppelin world. Yeah. So he he had heard of Mr. Jimmy's activities. And I think what happened was uh, Mr. Jimmy and his wife were constantly, if you ever come to Japan, you know, uh, please, we'll put on a show basically just for you. Yeah. And uh, I think they, through uh, maybe the Japanese division of Warner Brothers Records or something like that, had just over the years. Well, finally, I think Warner Brothers Records said, well, actually, he is going to come. To, to town to promote celebration day and they were like well 
you know, we're going to put on a show at the, the Giga Bar, this tiny club, he, of course, you know, please. And they were like, well, we'll let you know. And I think maybe two days before they were like, yep, yeah, he's going to come. And I, <laughs> I went to that club, which was so small. And I started to get heart palpitations just thinking, all right, I'm here. Jimmy Page is there. I have to do the 26 minute days confused. Yeah. I got nerves just thinking about what it would have been like for him. But you watch the tape and he crushes it. It's unbelievable. He really did crush it. And uh and I think that I I, I think it all comes back to that night in terms of this movie being able to be released. Because I think Jimmy Page recognized wow to figure out the 26 minute days and confused to and not just play the notes but to get the tone and um, yeah the amps the yeah, instruments yeah. he has the exact same instruments yeah he's got the telly he's got the magnavox he's got the high watt he's got yeah. the two marshals he has the martin d uh 18 mm-hmm. he has the uh you know the uh what was the other thing he had that blew, blew me away i can't Acoustic, yeah, yeah well, the, har- had, the harmony sovereign, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, it's like what you know, no, but that that night and that Jimmy Page, because the first thing Jimmy Page said to him was like, the work, yeah. the work that you put into this, I'm just blown away, and it happens really fast, but if you watch it again, Jimmy Page walks up to him, and the first thing is he actually takes Akio's playing hand, and and kisses his hand, wow. It was a pretty strong gesture. Yeah. And and I think he was just like really uh moved. I'm sure at first you walk in there and, and oh, yeah. you're, you're like, like Man, this, this is a little curious. You got four guys, Japanese guys up there wearing you and your friend's pants from nineteen seventy three. It's a yeah. little odd. Yeah. But once you got into the music yeah. and he heard the tone and and crushing those live arrangements and uh and obviously he's, th- he's thinking, Man, this guy really did spend thirty years play re- rewind half speed you know, quarter speed like rewind play rewind pause is it here is it here okay no i guess it's here all right i'll pick it up tomorrow i'm on to minute four of and you gotta confused. remember it <laughs> yeah years later you gotta remember like oh yeah this is i forgot i'm doing 77 yeah I, that's the thing i'm always like okay so you know maybe you're gonna do 73 this weekend and next weekend uh yeah 1980 show how you but um it's I don't know it's I it's his calling in life I don't know but anyway that night I really think Jimmy Page genuinely was moved and that's the only reason this movie could ever be released is that Jimmy signed off on it yes awesome and and because of uh, Akio's work it's, right. I think it's the only only reason that they they would do that and hopefully I think we did our best to just I was just always like all right we just have to meet Akio's level meet Akio's level of trying to meet Jimmy Page's level and um, do the best we can. We multi-tracked every show. We really paid, did a lot of work in the mix to try to just make it sound as it, as it should. And um, at the same time, the sound out of Akio's amp is so beautiful. You, oh. you don't need to, you're certainly not fucking around with that. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. So um, anyway, it was it, a pleasure, but we I, if getting the permission to do it and use the music. I think really all comes down to that night and Jimmy Page saying, "You know what? This guy is special." Lots of questions. Watching whenever I watch yeah. a documentary, I understand documentaries have to be about an hour and a half to two hours. But I'm always yeah. like, "Wait a minute, back up!" <laughs> so Jimmy comes, then his wife says, "Move to America." Yeah, she doesn't go. He's living in like some shit apartment in like Sherman Oaks or something. <laughs> And yeah, lots of questions. <laughs> That's so, a very they, Japanese thing. I was like, um, so, uh, yeah, wife, uh, yeah, yeah, are and, you done? <laughs> but that, that is, uh, I mean, um, how do you describe that? Hardcore focus. I mean, the, the wife believed this was his mission in life and he had just turned 50 50 wow i mean he looks young but he had just yeah, turned 50 jimmy page had just seen him and she thought this is your purpose in life so if i don't see you i see you every six months or once a year life is short go chase your dream so that was amazing and still uh, married or no oh yeah wow she's coming to our la premiere wow c- 
come out. You can meet Mrs. Jimmy, who's as compelling as as Mr. Jimmy. She's she'll be there on the fifteenth and sixteenth uh, at uh, Man's Chinese. So yeah, but she it was remarkable, and uh, I was like, um, I do you, you know you just ask those basic questions. Do you miss your mom? Do you miss your wife? And right. I was like, this is this is my chance, and I do respect that. I'm I'm forty seven, so you know you you. At 50, having had a day job his entire life, yeah, he's like, you know, how many more years do I have to actually go for it? And and for him, all of a sudden, again, it had always been nights and weekends. Now, for the first time in his life at age 50, he's a working musician. Yeah. So it was really exciting and the opportunity of a lifetime. So the equipment he has and the outfits he has and everything is a lot of money. Uh, yeah. This day job, they don't, I really couldn't get a grip on what he does or whatever, but he must have made some pretty damn good money because he has a 59 reissue. He has the telly. Yeah. He has the multiple marshals. He has the D18 Martin. Uh, the outfits, uh, the people that were putting the stuff together. What was his day job? Yeah, I probably should have. This is, yeah, I probably should have done a better job on that in the movie. But he, uh, he, well, I understand. He, a movie has uh, to move. Uh, yeah. yeah, but he, uh, he, I think he worked for a distributor of like uh, guitar effects pedals and guitar accessories. And oh, so stuff he's like in that. the biz, sort of. Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, and so we started to make friendships there and connections, and maybe would get a lead on. Hey, we got to use. Uh, he has a real '59 Les Paul. Mm. <laughs> yeah. What? So well, I'm hitting my coffee. Yeah. With <laughs> yeah. Is that so, a real one yeah. that he's playing? So on tour, sometimes he might use a right, reissue or yeah. something like that. But, but especially in Japan, that, that stuff that's opening the movie in this tiny-ass club in Niigata, Japan, is... I mean, that was wild to see here, witness a 59 Les Paul straight into the high watt. I mean, it was fucking insane. But um, yeah, I would say 99.9% uh, .9 of his equity is in his um, Jimmy Page accoutrement and, and guitar collection, 100%. They live very humbly. Yeah. Um, but again, they're Mr. and Mrs. Jimmy are fully committed to this dream and it's all about, well, I guess we'll, we have to stay in our small apartment so that we can have a 59, <laughs> which basically if he sold the 59, yeah. he could buy a home. Yes. Like own a kick-ass house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love the trade insanity off. of it. Trade off. Trade off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, and then he, you know, I'm sure he, uh, he, he tries to find people in his circle try to he try you know eventually someone kind of buy into the dream a little bit so yeah. maybe they give to him a little break but I know that that black dragon suit yeah. was an incredible amount of work uh, by Miss Osawa and it's not cheap nor and all these amplifiers and yeah. then do you know how much that outfit costs uh, I had heard a number around a big number like around like, like it took around thirty thousand dollars worth of work or something like that wow. to get that thing done. It is spectacular because I've been talking. I'm about to do Madison Square Garden um, with Bill Burr. And Dope. it's a dream. Uh, one of the biggest dreams of my life. You know, I played music and wanted to play mm. Madison Square Garden ever since the day I saw a song remains the same. Mm. And now I'm doing it as a comedian, which even means way more to me. Mm. But I always was obsessed with the dragon pants and, and jacket who made it. Nobody seems to know. I right. wanted to have the person. I heard it's a woman in LA that made it, right. but I always thought it would be great if I had a comedy special. I'd call it Dragon Pants, you know, because <laughs> it's just wow. so crazy. But we could hook you up with Mrs. Sawa. But have you talked? Yeah, thirty grand. Have you talked to um, Mr. Jimmy about who made the original? Because it seems he would. Oh, he's so obsessed. He would have sure, tracked that I'm down. I'm sure he, he's. Uh... On, on the hunt, but uh, I don't think he ever got her uh, identity. He did it. What did, how did he explain it in the film? First came the pants, right. then came the top. The jacket, yep. Yeah, I'm sure he's on the hunt. I mean, he's, I remember we went to a vintage, uh, we weren't filming, we were just hanging out. We went to like a vintage clothing fair in LA and uh, he comes up to me like with this uh, blousey style shirt and he's like, Peter. Peter, can you believe it? And I'm like, fuck, I, I should know what this garment is. I should know what this is. And yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, what is that? What is what is it? He goes, Chicago, 75, just the encore. And what? it was this like <laughs> semi-blousey thing that Paige had worn at like one show in fucking Chicago in 75, just for the encores. And he like fucking so um 
it's 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 wild and like you said it's all encompassing it's not yeah. just the notes it's not just the this it's all things page and to the point of when when he came in to do that first interview peter well what should uh what what should i wear and i said like well you know i'm actually interviewing you so you know dr- dress as your yourself yeah so he shows up with that um, blazery thing and like a scarf around, which is exactly how Jimmy Page would show up yeah, for an interview. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, I get it. Like basically, interview there page. is no, there is no you. You are <laughs> always Jimmy Page." And uh, I was like, "Wow, he's in deep." And yeah, any conversation, you know, I mean, I, I, I love him. It's great. But you bring him to your friend's dinner party, and uh, whatever the occasion is, at some point the conversation might circle towards the Arm Arms eighty three concert, oh, oh, or yeah. like he's gonna he's gonna yeah. back someone into a corner and be like, "Let me tell you about Outright." Yeah, Uh, because it's just you're always one degree away. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too. He knows even beyond Zeppelin. Like, I'm always like, boy, you should. Can you just do one night of the firm at Whiskey A Go Go? Yeah, that would be so great. Get Tony Franklin's uh, become. I saw the firm. You saw the firm. I saw the firm. Ah, Oakland Arena. Ah, dope. It was it was one of the greatest moments because I didn't get to see Zeppelin. Mm. I'm obsessed with. Dan the Greens in Oakland, and the last two uh, Zeppelin shows in America uh, were in '77 uh, yeah, yeah. at Oakland, uh, and after that, Robert Plant's son dies. Mm-hmm. They never play the states again because yeah. in '80, uh, Bonzo dies. And I, you know, I just love all things Zeppelin and the era, so I never got to see him, and I finally got to see the firm, and then later Page Plant and and all of that, but. You know, to see Paige at any time is is like a, oh, wow. You know, it oh, yeah. really is a, oh, wow. He is, to me, over anyone, the ultimate rock star. I mm. mean, he, he produced those records. He wrote those records. He created the guitar star. Of course, you had Hendrix and you have Eddie Van Halen, but this was way different. This was like, this guy was like, I mean, beyond huge. Well, I mean, he, he inspired Paul McCartney to write lyrics about what it meant to be a rock star. Like right. He wrote about who's that man running across the stage. Looks like he's, you know, from a different age, Jimmy Page. Like, um, I remember I saw him first time live. I guess I think I was freshman in college or something like that he played boston garden page and plant tour yeah. was first in line on newbury street tower records by a margin of like six hours we're like we're gonna get the fucking best seats ever and then of course uh. they show up and they're like all right we're just gonna give random numbers by wristbands and i'm like, i've been here for fucking 24 yeah. hours yeah. and they're like yeah you're gonna be number 82 in the queue i was like i'm gonna kill you but uh eventually we get our tickets to the show i just saw like i see this shadowy figure come out on stage yeah. you know they start playing that opening tales of brawn thing and i just see the ember of a cigarette and i'm like it's page you know yeah, and i was like totally it's page and just the he i mean he's uh as you said he's a composer he's a studio genius but he's also this like alchemist on stage who can do something beyond and uh yeah, I completely lost my shit at that show. I mean, it, it was amazing. And that's even another a, a era of Page. If you look at all the eras, yeah. for some reason, there was all these rumors that he was totally addicted to wine. He'd be just drunk. And they had that like slobber would kind of drip off while he was playing. And it would just kind of hang. Uh, so, you know, you're all, there's all these different eras of Page that are just incredible. You're like, oh, wow. Did you, you know, see it? Did you see the '98 Page Plant tour? I saw the one, the electric, not the one with the um, with uh, all the like the four piece lineup. Yeah, with that drummer when, dude. When, when they were the '98 tour, when he was doing No Quarter live and how many more times yeah. live, I was like, it was fucking insane. I mean, yeah. His chops were insane. Yeah, I, I man, I wish they had just kept on going. But uh, that those shows. Uh, his playing is so ferocious, yeah. and that band was so tight by that point. Anyway, it was great. That that, that drummer that was great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's gone now. Yeah, Michael Lee. Yeah. Wow. That guy was insane. Mm. Jimmy, you know, I mean, it's just even the Black Crows thing. I was supposed to mm. open for them, and uh, at the Shoreline, mm. 
and I, I had a less 59 less Paul, uh, uh, Tom Murphy reissue. I'm like, I'm having him sign this guitar the second <laughs> I meet him. And then they canceled. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. He heard his back or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you know, if I ever met Jimmy, like Mr. Jimmy did, the first thing I would say is who made the dragon suit? <laughs> That's over uh, anything. Uh, uh, uh. Um, I was recently a few years back, went to that guitar exhibit in New York and they had a dragon suit in there mm. and they say it's Jimmy's. His guitars were there as 59 and the, and the telly the dragon telly. I think they were reissued, you know? Uh, I mean, I looked at the guitars pretty hard uh, and I was like, mm, I think this is uh like, you know, he has a, uh, some amazing mm, re mm, recreated mm, ones from Tom Murphy, mm. but I don't think it was the number one. Mm. Um, but there was a dragon suit in there. Yeah. The full, I got pictures. I'll show it to you, but mm -hmm. full on, they had like a mannequin mm -hmm. wearing the dragon suit. And I was wondering if that is it. I know Jimmy still has pretty much everything. Yeah. It's fucking wild. Yeah. I mean, his book is amazing. The stuff oh, he has in there. So good. Yeah. yeah. Now, when Mr. Jimmy moves here, mm. he's no longer working. He joins the the tribute band, Led Zepp again. Mm. And uh, is he sharing an apartment with someone? How does this happen? So, uh, yeah, he has- He's living with the singer, right? No, no. He, he Well, eventually, he uh, to train him, he moved in with that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to that, train and torture yeah. him, he yeah, moved in Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. He's, <laughs> he's teaching the cover band, Led Zepp again- all of their mistakes and teaching them how to fix it all. It's crazy. It's intense. Memos, yeah, memos, really, really memos wild. were sent. Memos were sent. He, he had a friend, uh, has a friend named Warren, who uh, his family used to own some uh, music stores around LA. I forget the name of the chain. But he, Warren used to go to Japan, I don't know, maybe for trade shows or something. Met Jimmy, kind of became friends. And Warren, when this all started, uh, maybe I'll come to the States. Warren was like, you come here. You got a place to stay in Studio City. Uh, it ain't Beverly Hills, but it's free. Yeah. So, but it's uh, better. Yeah. yeah. Studio City's great. Yeah. So we moved to. I might have ran, walked by Mr. Jimmy. You may have. <laughs> you may have. Uh, so, uh, yeah, his friend Warren, who uh, he had, he's the guy who um, I shot a scene with him, but uh, we didn't put it in the movie. But he's the guy who has that Rickenbacker transonic. Um, Amp, so it's this crazy ass oh, yeah. solid state that they were using in 69. That's from Warren's collection that Warren and Jimmy rehabbed to put into working shape to use on that for that 69 show. So, yeah, I mean, they're like two maniacs in a pod uh, hanging out there in Studio City <laughs> rewiring amplifiers and stuff. Um, but, yeah, so Jimmy's got some friends who kind of just help make it make it happen. But, yeah, he comes here and, you know, I really give Swan, actually, the singer of Led Zeppelin, a lot of credit because he... He went, he said, yeah, let's try doing these live arrangements. Let's do a three hour show. Let's go for it. And he didn't say, Hey man, we've been doing this for 25 years. Um, get, get out of here. They, they, they went for it. And, uh, I'm actually glad it was like a good counterpoint in the movie. Somebody's yeah. got to say, I don't know, Jimmy, are we <laughs> taking it too far? And well, it, it's yeah. a good point because, you know, these people hire Led Zeppelin cover bands or Judas Priest or Eddie Van Halen and stuff. And in your mind, when you start a tribute band, you're like, we're not going to play the standard shit, man. We're going to play like uh, mm -hmm. Unchained, but we're also going to play like, um, you know, take your whiskey home. We're going to do like uh, the yeah. Spanish fly instead yeah. of eruption uh. and club bookers immediately and audiences. They want the surface. Yeah. They want the yeah. hits. Yeah. They want the surface uh, performance. And, you know, one of the greatest things I saw when I was growing up was Beatlemania. Uh. And of, of course it was the hits, but it was all the different eras and the looks and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I do a tribute to Bon Scott once a year right. with a group of, uh, uh, you know, great humans, Bill Burr playing drums, uh, Mike Inez, Allison Chains, Josh Z right. on guitar, all these great guys. And every year, Scott Ian, we're like, okay, let's get some deep tracks in there. You know, <laughs> let's do uh squealer. Let's do, <laughs> um, overdose and man you get the just stares <laughs> you know they're looking at you like where should we all night long you know and stuff like that yeah. so 
I was feeling that tension as he was like, I want to create the exact song remains the same concert. Hmm. And, and the promoters are like, what is this shit? 23 minute guitar solo. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. That shit was real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, pretty bold. I mean, because uh, I think, you know, sometimes we, we show in the film, I mean, they might just be playing, you know, the Agora Hills, uh, set, uh yeah, that place out there. Yeah, yeah. They're like, uh, let's have a community uh, concert. And they're like, yeah, man, we're going <laughs> to yeah. give you the full on. That was 26 minute like, days. It's like it's daytime. Like, yeah. You're like, okay. <laughs> um, but I, that's commitment. That's commitment. But I, 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 uh, I actually really respected uh, Swan's point of view of, um, you know, there's a time and place to go super deep, balls to the wall, three and a half hour show. And then, you know, tonight we're at Romano's Bar and Grill. So we yeah. may just need to do uh, some hits. Yeah. But um, And Jimmy says, no, see ya. Yeah. Which I respect also. But ballsy. He had moved to the United States to join Led Zepp again. Mm -hmm. He tries to create his vision of I want to do exact uh, eras and concerts. They try it for a while. They're like in a pizza parlor in, in Long Beach. Yeah. And I'm like, this guy moved from Japan and he's in a pizza parlor. Yeah, and, that was tough. That yeah. was tough to film him. You know, eventually he leaves up again and he's, I, I thought the movie was going to be over because they had done this recreation in Tokyo with Zep again. It was insane. That I thought was bang on because yeah. the, again, now you're doing a show in a Japanese theater where the entire crew is like Jimmy. Right. So they're like, oh, shall we redo the original pyro cues? And you're like, wow, this is insane, but I think I like it. And they're like, well, we need to bring in hot lights because they had vintage hot lights, uh, they, you know, in 73. Yeah. Every fucking detail. They do that show. I'm like, oh, this might be the end. East meets West. You guys had your conflict, but you put on a great show. We're done. And Jimmy is like, didn't you see all the mistakes that they made? And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And he's like, I'm quitting this band. I'm going to form a new band. It's going to be at real high level. And I was like, oh, man, I thought I was done with this project. But uh, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe do I want to follow this guy? Yeah. I guess. And that's when it got really interesting and got hairy. And, yeah, he's forming his own band. But Jimmy's a genius artist, maybe not so great at business. And that band, as you saw, yeah, they wind up playing some a pizza parlor. And they're, oh. they're arguing. And it falls apart. And then he has no band. And then that went on for almost a year. Wow. Where I was sitting with the movie three and a half years in of shooting and I'm going, oh man, this would be a real downer ending. Uh, if he just, okay. And I lost, I'm going back to Japan and uh, yeah. I'm going to take my day job back. And I'd be like, but that sometimes is real life. So I, that interview on the couch in studio city, it was very real. Me saying, you know, uh, it had been like six, nine months of nothing. I was like, you know, well, where are we? What, what, what do you think, man? Cause, um, I don't know. Do you want to go back to Japan? And he was so heartbroken of the thought of going back to that lifestyle of having a day job. And all of us as artists can relate to that. Of course. We're just a few scary fuck ups away from being back. there. One flat tire away. Yeah. You know, so I, I was like, I fucking get this. And um, he's like, Peter, I, I, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could f do it. I don't think I could go back to that life, especially in Japan. It's so regimented. You know, and I uh, talk about losing yourself. So um, he's like, Peter, I've worked too hard. Something's going to work out. And I was like, we'll see. And then maybe a month later, this Jason, phone calls. Bo Jason Bonham calls. It's unbelievable. And I was like, oh, my God, it couldn't yeah. have been any more perfect. And then he goes to audition. I said a prayer. Yeah. Peter, I got the gig. I Did you like, get to go to the oh. audition or No. No, they wouldn't let me film that. I was like, can I, 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 can I sneak in your gig bag? Can I do something? Yeah. And Jason's like, no, uh, private audition. I was like, okay, no problem. But then in a way, uh, spoiler alert, creates a little drama in the movie. Then we just hard cut to Australia. And yeah. at that point, I was four years into filming, even more broke than I was a year prior. How the fuck am I going to get to Australia? I'm like, I got to find a way to, this is such an epic ending to the movie. Yeah. Like a fucking sign from God, I open my mail. There's like a credit card offering from Bank of America. <laughs> I'm like, we're going to Australia, boys. I fucking charge some plane tickets, get down there. We shoot him playing with Jason. Our tiny crew, we were so happy for this guy. I mean, 40 fucking years of doing this, and now he's playing with Jason Bonham in Australia. 
we all shared a little teary moment on that boat out there in Australia. And then him back and forth with Jason was insane musically and it was so great. And I was like, wow, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I mean, you achieved your dream. You yeah. did it. Now you're taking this music on the road all over the world. Um, I was like, oh, this has actually worked out. <laughs> When he gets the Jason Bonham gig, which by the way, it's uh, another uh, version of that rock star movie, like the dude that sang uh, the covers, uh, you know, worked at Home Depot, he's in Boston. Uh, the Journey guy, uh, uh, yeah. Arnell, that yeah. joins Journey, and the Judas Priest guy, you mm. know, that joins Priest. Mm. When he gets the gig, does Jason say, hey, you play incredible, everything good, but don't wear the outfits? Pretty much, yeah. 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 I mean, in that situation, you know, Jason's the big dog yeah. and, and Jason's the real deal. So I think Jason, uh, his vision for that show is, uh, it's different than Jimmy's. Now, Jimmy still has his own Mr. Jimmy band and they will do costumes, three and a half hours, everything authentic. You know, they're playing more of your small clubs for, for Jason's tour. Yeah, I mean, I was like, oh, how's this going to work out? But uh Clearly, Jason's the big dog there, and is saying oh, it's it's going to be like this. And I think Jimmy for a while was like, "Okay, what do I got to do? How do I how do I make this work?" Sometimes Jason's arrangements, he might be like, "All right, when we do since I've been loving you, it's going to be the '73 live MSG style." But maybe we're going to do a Wanton song that's pretty much studio mixed in with a little bit of how Page did it on his own solo tour or something right. like that so uh finding all those those balances and jason i think loves to maybe last minute to his guys be like all right set list tonight all right guys let's do uh let's do a run through of uh fool in the rain and uh, why not how about a sound check with cruz alhambra and this is that and jimmy's like in his hotel room like yeah. studying instead it has to be perfect has to be perfect has to be perfect um but i mean musically it's just great i mean jason on drums jimmy on guitar yeah uh, and everybody in Jason's band is really high level. So um, it's pretty dope, but it is different. It's different than Jimmy. He's, he's Jason. What's interesting about Jason is if there's a part two, I guess we would get into this. Jason will be like, Hey, I want to see you on stage. Right. Right. Who are you? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a very American British thing versus a Japanese thing. And I think Akio was like, wait, who am I? <laughs> or what do you mean? You don't, he's like, you know, don't dress like Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Dress like dress like you. And yeah. he's like and you'll look at the way Akio dresses for these shows. And you're like, he's still he's yeah. still, you know, there's a little something there. Yeah, yeah. Um of Paige. So uh I think that, you know, uh, uh I don't think there's gonna be a part two, but if there were a part two, it would be about all right, so now he's in Jason's band and Jason's kinda like, All right, man, we're we are not uh doing the costumes we're not we're clones. not an imitation yeah, yeah we're not clones so actually i want you to put a little of you into it yeah and i think that's probably a challenge for you well it would have been corny you know mm -hmm. and I, I love when he does mr jimmy yeah. but if you're out on a real tour and yeah. you know then it's like ah oh, what are you doing you yeah know? and jason has played yeah i mean he played with what, zeppelin <laughs> and he played he played uh on Outrider, and he played yeah. on that tour, and, and, he's and like, he doesn't dress he's, like his dad. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. I mean, yeah. how how weird would that be? Um, <laughs> so, right. uh, but yeah, musically, I was like, oh, this is this is fun. Just to, I mean, Jason's level of playing is like, yeah, wild, and the two of them together. Yeah. So you went broke making this, sold your yeah. car, and and uh, all your money, like, <laughs> yeah. Dating in L.A. without a car is quite interesting. Showing up on a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you got it all together, and it's 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 going to be in some theaters. Let's tell people. Mm. Uh, my I got a bunch of friends that are going to see it in San Rafael. Oh, cool. Yeah, because I saw Mr. Jimmy. I needed to see it right away. Uh -huh. I heard about it months ago, and uh -huh. I hit up the people like, look, I've got to see this. And then I talked about it like a month ago. They're like, don't talk about it yet. I go, no, I got to talk about it now because it's so fresh and so crazy uh -huh. in my mind. Uh -huh. um, so it's out. You guys are kind of doing some premiere parties. There's one in L.A. You're, Mr. Jimmy's going to be at San Rafael. Where else are you going to be? 
So uh, let's see. We're going to do um, the band. If you want to see a Mr. Jimmy show yeah. uh, to the hilt, what is it? Friday, September 9th, oh. up at Sweetwater. Oh, great venue oh, up oh, at Mill Valley. San Rafael. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, see the band. Then on the 10th, it's playing San Rafael Film Center. If my memory is right, I think the 11th, we're at Berkeley. Uh-huh. And this is all with Jimmy in person. Probably he'll have the Harmony Sovereign with him doing a couple acoustic bits. And then I think the 12th, we're in Sebastopol. And then uh, September 15th, 16th, 17th, Jimmy will be in person, uh, Man's Chinese on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, Yeah. Uh, And then we slowly roll it out. So uh, it's an indie. Everything is super indie movie made by hand, distributed by hand. So if you're in a town, if you're in Denver and you're like, I really wanted to come here, please contact your local indie cinema and be like, hey, I heard of this movie. It's really awesome. And see if they'll bring the movie. Uh, hopefully we're in cinemas for the next couple months and then we'll see after that. Maybe we Netflix do maybe. that, do that thing. Yeah. But, uh, for now, I mean, I made this movie and mixed this movie for people to get in there. And, you know, when we get to the whiskey, a go-go and he digs into that, how many more times solo for like two solid minutes. Like I want you enwrapped in the five, one and, and the screen and just yeah. to just be transported. You're not at home. You're not checking out. Yeah. Uh, what's happening on tinder or whatever you're fucking immersed in the music and that's a that was my overall approach to the music to the whole movie was we don't need someone on camera saying jimmy page is great let me tell you why this music is great i just want to here's the music you're either you're either in love with this music or you're not i yeah. can't change that but just vibe on it i want to give you the experience of seeing this stuff live feeling the music um not, not talking about it couple more questions then we'll get out of here uh has jimmy seen it mystery <laughs> really a little bit of mystery on it which is appropriate enough uh-huh. i i yeah i heard through one, one uh, record label person when we were talking about stuff was like oh yeah no tr- trust me is eventually this will get done eventually this will get done he likes it i'm like oh does he like it has he seen it I, i'm assuming he did because at some point he robert plant john paul jones in the estate of john bonham signed off on i think it's 29 uh, Led Zeppelin compositions as oh, yeah. performed by Akio. Each song obviously has to be approved by the songwriters to be to be used. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but in terms of uh, has he sent me a a, a DM? Uh, great job, bro. No, but <laughs> but that's appropriate. I mean, yeah, he's yeah, he's course. a rock god. He yeah. needs to remain uh, shrouded in a little bit of mystery. But I do think, I mean, um, the endor- the biggest endorsement, the biggest thing I could ever ask for is just that. They gave me the permission to use this music. Of course. Because I really started off. It'd be now, dead I, without it. I, I would this would be a movie that I would show to my grandmother every Christmas on the couch yeah. and cry into my uh turkey or whatever and be like, oh, I made this movie that no one could ever see. I mean, um, that's the greatest uh endorsement, gift, sign of support I could ever ask for in the world. Cause I really now I look back like I must have been a little bit crazy to start this whole thing, spend years on it, and then just cross my fingers that they would give it the thumbs up oh my god right no with no music i recently watched this acdc uh doc it was um my stupid cover band and the guy put it together he has a cover band called back in black and that was the the singer was the one that got asked to audition for acdc when um brian was out right before Before axel Axel got in yeah and so i'm watching the whole thing and there's just no music so it doesn't get flagged on youtube you know Uh, and i'm like this is cool but (laughs) each time you're like okay i want to hear the dude sing yeah (laughs) you know it's like yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's like one second (laughs) (laughs) so thank god you got the music because it really uh it really lets you see how good mr jimmy is man it's crazy hopefully i mean i think also like uh time and time again working on it and watching it again you know um it brings you back to the original, you know, hopefully yeah. it just leads more people to go back and discover how much, I mean, it's staggering to me how many great tunes Jimmy Page conceived, it's recorded. It's like I, I was just going, we, we were just talking to um, the publicist about, oh, some Rolling Stone would like a clip. And I was like, wow. And then I'm thinking, yeah, you know what? We have, there's this beautiful clip of Akio playing Bronyar. I love that. And I'm like, you know, nobody even, that that song is so 
amazing and beautiful and uh it's it but if you had to list jimmy page's achievements it might be a footnote but i'm like that is a masterpiece piece yeah. of music midnight moonlight masterpiece of guitar orchestration um on and on and on so i yeah i hope people watch the, the movie they they dig into the details and akio's hard work and then they you know pull out a zeppelin record and realize like it really is the classical music of our time it's gonna be around forever for a reason Mr. Jim, he's still living in L.A.? Splits his time. Now he's in Tokyo a lot. Unless uh, he's touring with Jason, he's pretty much in Tokyo. But right now uh, he's touring with Jason. So he'll Studio City is still his hub. Yeah. and um, He's got an apartment here. Well, no, he's still with his buddy Warren. Oh, that's cool. I mean, uh, yeah, he's still, yeah. he's got to keep it humble because you got to keep updating that dragon suit. I, that dragon suit, <laughs> 30 grand. It is beautiful. Yeah. I'd love to talk to that woman. Like, had she get her on the pod? Ha, yeah, but did she speak English? <laughs> we can get a translator. Yeah. Does she? Uh, has she done outfits before? Like, yeah, oh, her thing. I think she does all kinds of embroidery. It might be something that winds up on on your wall. Right. It could right, maybe right. be a piece of clothing. But right. um, I mean, how did yeah. he find her? I I I think uh, Mrs. Jimmy. I think found her. I know that she was in this town called Kiryu that was like embroidery town yeah. this is where embroidery the best town. this is like where the best embroiderers in all of japan they all Isn't live that weird we and, live here <laughs> we live in embroidery town and uh you know mrs jimmy had been assembling all those photos kind of to me i love that scene it's almost like yeah. a scene out of a beautiful mind yep. i mean every angle of jimmy page's thing and you're trying to paste it all together and approached her and uh she took it on and she was a hell of a character genius brilliant and also quite a flirt i remember she was flirting her <laughs> sound guy like a lot it was kind of great but um no i mean that those are the i mean uh, and we could go on those those black and white shoes yeah. that page are so yeah. iconic he had a, a cobbler make those from scratch in tokyo wow. just uh, everything you could you could think of but um i mean i just love that and it all goes back to that first clip rain song wait a minute it's the blue button down shirt. It's yeah. the white linen pants. It's this and that. And then I talked to him about that. Oh, did you know that Jimmy Page changed, changed the, the pants slightly from the first <laughs> night to the second night? I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean. Uh, and Jimmy's that obsessed too, which is which yeah. is wild. No, I mean. Because I Jimmy didn't just throw shit on. Yeah. You know? No, I mean, I think all that stuff, you know, I you think back to 75, 73, 75, you're doing shows in 30 thousand upwards to seventy thousand seat arenas without a video screen right so you do need to wear something that pops yeah yeah and uh it is true it's just it's it's part of the mystique of jimmy page and, and mrs jimmy says it like even if the guitar playing is great if you don't capture that magical whatever it is of page yeah it's, it's not not the same and i do think that no disrespect to all the other tribute bands out there but really, Mr. Jimmy is the only one that can even start to approximate that feeling of, oh, man, is this what it would have been like to to stumble into the Whiskey A Go-Go in 69 and yeah. see the real thing? Um, and then his name, yeah. Mr. Jimmy, is so cool. Is that cool? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Jimmy. Yeah, I was like, oh, I, I got to call the movie this because I can't talk about it. Well, thanks a lot. Does uh, you got an Instagram or anything for the? Uh... Yeah, Mr. Everything is Mr. Jimmy Movie. So on Facebook, Mr. Jimmy Movie. Instagram, Mr. Jimmy Movie. Twitter, Mr. Jimmy Movie. And uh, the website, Mr. Jimmy Movie dot com. We're gonna up. We update all the screenings there pretty much every day, every week. So uh, if any screenings are added, they'll be uh, added to the website. There's a little newsletter. Sign up. Follow us on social media. And yeah, please any support. Goes a long way because this movie wasn't made by some company or anything else. It was just made by Crazy Me and American Express, Visa, MasterCard, and Discover. So any support, sharing goes a long way. That'd be great, man. Mm. And then uh, the Mr. Jimmy concert at the Sweetwater. Mm. What era are they playing? 73. 73 MSG. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, oh. peak peak Jimmy stuff. God, I might have to go to that. I think that's yeah. that. Oh, no, that's coming up. I'm. I'm at, gonna... I'm at the La Jolla Comedy Store, 8, 9, 10. Damn. Ah. But are they playing a gig in L.A., Mr. Jimmy? Well, he's also playing... Let's see. He's playing with Jason at uh -huh. the Greek on right. the 23rd. Right. So that's pretty dope. And then um, as the movie rolls out, I feel like we'll add... Uh, I think we'll add another Mr. Jimmy show somewhere in the mix. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
All right. Well, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you. You know, we really appreciate any support and coverage because oh it's a it's a really little independent movie. So I'm, I'm, I'm really talking grateful. to you because I just thought that you know somebody to, to make this film. I know what kind of passion and grind that takes. So yeah, eight uh, years at this point. It's God, eight year years. journey. <laughs> wow. And, wow. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, to another episode of Let There Be Talk. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, leave a review on iTunes, my friends. It really helps, believe it or not. And candles are lit.